This video is gonna be a little different than my other ones. It's still on topic, we're still talking about tech, but I wanna talk about the tech ecosystem and the parties responsible for making a piece of technology happen. Now, there are three major parties in this tech ecosystem. There is the end user, there is the enthusiast, someone who likes to tinker with their tech all the way up to a support level or someone who would fix the tech. And then there is the designer, the people that actually do the heavy lifting with creating the tech and usually don't go outside that much. So let's take a look at each of these and see what role they play. Now, the end user is our biggest group because all of us are an end user in some type of tech ecosystem. Oftentimes, the designer and the enthusiast will also be an end user of whatever product they're working on or promoting if they really believe in it and they find it useful. But the vast majority of end users in tech are like race car Johnny here. Race car Johnny doesn't really understand how his car works, nor does he care. He just knows that his car goes vroom vroom, and he doesn't even give much thought about the car itself. What he's really interested in is what he can accomplish. The car goes vroom vroom, it makes him money, it makes him famous, he gets lots of girls. That's what he's actually interested in. That's the end goal. The car is just a tool to accomplish that, and oftentimes he won't even be aware that it is the tool that accomplishes that. And this analogy translates perfectly into technology. So most people don't know or care how their technology works. A lot of people, if you ask them what technology they have, like what computer they have, they probably won't even know unless it's a Mac because there's so much branding that Apple does to make the end user aware of what they have. Um, but most people, they just know that whatever they have, it has lights and it makes a whirring noise and they can open up Google Chrome to get boobs and video games and all of that important stuff. Now, the end user has every right to not understand the tools that they use to accomplish their task. Obviously, not everyone can be an enthusiast or a designer, but they should understand that if they remain way over here to the left as a race car Johnny and never attain more than a surface level understanding of what they have, then they are extremely vulnerable. When race car Johnny goes to buy a new car, he could get ripped off because he doesn't know anything about the engine, whether he wants a V8 or a V12. You know, you ask him how many cylinders his engine needs to have, and this guy, he doesn't even know what a cylinder is. He doesn't even know it within the context of the geometry. And obviously with tech, it's an even bigger deal since the end users are typically the ones getting malware and having their identity stolen and getting hacked and all of the bad things that could happen out there in the tech world. So if this is you, then you are choosing to be ignorant. You are choosing to be vulnerable. And when a sheep decides to go out to the edge of a field by the woods and then just lay down and close its eyes and not really be paying any attention, I can't really feel that bad for it when a wolf jumps out of the woods and pounces on him. So then we have the enthusiast, who arguably play the most important role in this ecosystem because one of their primary functions is to serve as a connection between the end users and the designers because these two can't really communicate directly to one another for reasons that I'll discuss shortly. But the enthusiast can serve as a connection in a number of ways. So they can explain to the normies how the tech works, uh, what makes it good or bad in a way that is easy for the normies to understand and digest so that they can make somewhat informed decisions for themselves. The most popular enthusiasts like Linus, they're basically shepherds to the tech normies. They're basically herding them towards whatever tech they think and hopefully they think that it's good in an informed way is good. 
But obviously, those opinions, they're only as informed as the information that's coming from the enthusiast and the information that the enthusiast is getting from the designer or just generating from their own research if they actually decide to do any research on it at all. So if the tech shepherd ends up hurting the normies off of a cliff, then a lot of them are going to end up jumping. And on this level, we also typically find support roles. So this is where the IT guys or provisioning analyst or even the sales guys to a degree, although sales associates in the tech world are often not very well informed and they just push whatever is going to get them uh, the best sales numbers or the best commission. I mean, that's pretty much true in the sales world as a whole. You typically don't find really honest guys unless they're just being really well paid at a base level. And even then, there can be some corruption. Um, but yeah, the enthusiasts, they play a big role in influencing the rest of the ecosystem. They're explaining the products to the end user. They're making recommendations. Uh, they're doing fixes. And as a result, this group probably has the most powerful influence on one, what type of tech succeeds and what type fails. Now, finally, on the right side, we have the designer. So this is where the developers of software reside. Um, especially when we're talking about low level languages uh, that's typically considered harder to use like C, C++ and assembly. These are the ones that are also designing CPUs, motherboards, and even building the computers. Although that role sort of blends in with the upper end of the enthusiast role as well. All of these roles, they actually do blend into one another to some degree, of course. Uh, not everyone is a race car Johnny just surfing the web. Some of them are smart enough to install Adblock or even install Ubuntu. But like I said earlier, the designers have trouble communicating to the end users. And this is because many of the designers, especially the ones who are really good at their job and the most brilliant in their field, have autism. Or they are usually on the autism spectrum. And it makes sense because an autistic brain, at least one that is high functioning, has a very good balance of creativity, logical ability, and downright obsession to design an amazing CPU or an amazing piece of software because of just how much depth and focus an autist tackles their projects with. So this is why developers have trouble communicating with the normies, because normies tend to be very shallow and not dedicate very much time or effort into any one thing. So the densely packed autistic brilliance of someone like Richard Stallman here, it can't really be absorbed well by someone who's not on the spectrum themselves. The message and the ideas, they just pass right through. And oftentimes, the designers are sort of shocking and frightening to the normies since the normie here, they're just used to going vroom vroom. So when you have someone who comes along and starts breaking down to race car Johnny, how the engine actually works and like the molecular design of gasoline and like what actually allows the car to go vroom vroom, race car Johnny starts getting weirded out and, you know, just backs away and stops listening and goes, I don't know, racing around on the track some more. Now, like I said earlier, uh, that the race car Johnnies, they are ultimately responsible for their lack of understanding and the repercussions of it. The Richard Stallmans, they are also responsible for their abundance of autism and the repercussions of that, which is a bit of a catch-22 because the higher your level is, at least to an extent, I guess it would be more of a bell curve than a linear progression chart, but the higher your level and the less aware you will be of social norms, uh, which is basically the parameters in which the normie is comfortable operating in. You can think of social norms just as this fence and anything that's outside of that fence, the normie isn't really going to be comfortable dealing with it, whether it's logical or moral uh, beyond that point. You know, the again, race car Johnny, he doesn't think about that. The car goes vroom and he doesn't think about anything more. So... 
If you're functioning at this high level, it's a good idea to either hide your power level in the presence of normies or try to almost play the role of the tech shepherd and hoard them towards a better ecosystem or at least select a good shepherd in the enthusiast level and make sure that you can at least communicate your ideas to them because if you can't, then you'll either end up being stuck making software that only people that have a little bit of tism can use or worse, you'll get stuck creating software that you know is shit, but the consumerist machine that is the normie demands it. And that's the worst place for a gifted designer to be, designing software that they know is shit, but they just have no other choice.